Hey folks, welcome. This is a designer assisted or co-designer assisted unboxing video of the brand new shipping literally the day this video releases. It starts to ship anyway. Uh, Crimea, Conquest and Liberation, the new operational combat series game for Multiman Publishing. Joining me is Mr. Co-designer, Mr. Anthony Burkett. Tony, thanks for uh, thanks for doing this. Pleasure, Gary. Hey, Tony. It is a million o'clock over in the UK at the moment, so this is a big ask for Tony to accommodate my schedule. So, Tony, I want to talk about, because there's kind of two situations in the box here, and it's a co-design with Guy Wild, and one of the two situations is yours, and one is Guy's. So let's talk about kind of what this covers. Okay. Um, so you've got the... 4142 campaign, which Guy has researched in depth for years. And he's pulled together a great game. Chip's developed that half as he's developed my half, Chip Saltzman. <clears throat> and I've done looked at a 4344 campaign. Now, what do I mean by 4344? Well, 4142's fairly well documented. I linked the start of the 43 campaign to fit in with third winter, same start date and the rest of the Osprey series. So you get the Taman Peninsula, the guys have gone on about Cross of Iron, all the rest. You get that situ strategic situation, and then it goes all the way through to the end of May 44 and the conquest of Crimea. What makes OCS a good system to deal with these particular situations? Um, I think this, the, 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 the setup is such that it's scalable. I think the great thing about OCS is it's scalable. So something like this, Crimea, one map, Sicily, reluctant enemies, the system scales up very well as you become a more experienced player. I always say it's a great parallel is the game of chess. It doesn't take too long to learn to play it, but as you get more skilled at it, you can scale up. And I think the great thing about Crimea is, and the OCS system, it can, it can demonstrate amphibious assaults, mechanized warfare, combined arms, air support, in a system that has evolved over 20 odd years is pretty stable and gives a dynamic gaming experience for both players. Okay, great. So um, let's, uh, let's, uh, first of all, I should, I should make a note that uh, this unboxing is courtesy of both Tony and Multiman Publishing. So thanks to both Tony and Multiman Publishing for making this happen on a very accelerated schedule. So um, let's uh, let's open her up. Now we've got here a, a pretty standard MMP inch and a half box here, uh, and also pretty standard MMP official shrink wrap. I want to say the complexity on the complexity and solitaire suitability on the back of these boxes, at least these in particular, really mean very little to me at this point. So yeah, I'd say medium and medium is fine. OCS, I've always felt solitaires pretty well. Uh, because of its sort of puzzle-like nature. So, uh, uh, MMP has been kind enough to include this lurid magenta contents card. So what we should have here is a box and a lid, one 22 by 34 inch map sheet, three counter sheets, one OCS 4.3 series rule book, one Crimea game specific rule book, one Crimea game specific playbook, interesting, two OCS 4.3 charts and tables, five player aids, um, two terrain effects cards and two six sided dice. I feel Tony like uh, MMP has stepped up a little bit on production in terms of the last few OCS games. I agree, and I hope you guys you would go through this. You'll be impressed again. Brian, uh, Chip, myself, and others have looked at where could we improve yet again on things like Third Winter and everything like that in production quality. So. This is a good test to see what you think, Gary. Please have a look. All right. At it. Well, we're going to find out. If I have complaints, I will complain. Here we have two very standard <laughs> MMP dice, which I, you know, they're standard dice. They'll go with the other ones. Um, so let's first of all bust out the map. Now, who did the map art for this, uh, Tony? Was this Dean? Dean and myself, yeah. So okay. Dean and myself, um, I mean, we, one of the things, Gary, is we're hoping to speed up the process and not rely on one individual. So Dean mm -hmm. finishes the things off. I lay it all out in Illustrator and can move it. Primarily, you've got the Case Blue map. 
upgraded mm -hmm. and slightly geographically shifted to the east to include more of the Taman Peninsula. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then so yeah, for those that are familiar with uh, OCS, this will be a very, very familiar map style. So um, we next have, uh, and I, I should also mention for, for anyone who hasn't heard, our, our best wishes uh, are with Dean uh, for a speedy and complete recovery. And I'm, I'm sure I speak for both Tony and Chip and the entire OCS community yeah, yeah. Um, uh, about that. So we've got the uh, OCS series rules. Yeah, we do have a bit of lag here, so sorry about that. Yet another technical challenge. Okay, so OCS four point three rule book. Uh, when did four point three debut? Do we do you, do you remember? Was that third winter, or was that Hungarian Rhapsody, or Smolensk? It, well, I think it was Hungarian. It started with Hungarian Rhapsody, but mainly when yeah. he got to Smolensk, I think it was a stable by then. Um, we we do look at um, whether it needs any further um, movement, and Chip is the master of that. And Chip is looking mm -hmm. very closely at what needs to be done. As you can see, he's producing a lot of great player aids and making that downloadable and everything like that, which is tremendous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now obviously the. The, the level of changes happening between versions of OCS uh, rules versions at this point is very small. Uh, this is an extremely mature, highly polished system. So I will observe, however, that the uh, paper is quite thick. Um, Semi-gloss, I'd say, uh, satin finished paper, and it is full color. Uh, not incredibly heavy use mm. of color, but it's here. So that's nice, too. And we've got, what, about 60 step pages? Forward. Like that's that. one of the step forward, Gary. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I personally I was fine with the old one, but um, you know, people like color. It feels more deluxe mm -hmm. if there's color. You know what I'm saying? So huge list of people in the uh, playtesting community on this. So I was in on one of the really early playtests over Vassal on this too. I guess it was early. I guess, and I got to play the 41, uh, 42 scenario, and and I liked it a great deal. I felt like this did a very good job of managing a campaign that i don't know still to this day a ton about but i look forward to diving into this to give me a uh, an excuse to learn more about it so nice rule book we have a crimea game specific rule book and a crimea playbook uh this is something we haven't seen before so um, same paper feels like on the, the game-specific rule book, and it's only 12 pages. Mm -hmm. Okay, what uh, tell us about what, uh, what kind of special stuff is in here for Crimea specifically, Tony. I if, think if there was a, a signature. One. Yeah, if there's like a signature piece or two of game-specific rules, that's kind of what I'm asking. I, I think you're going to be looking at um, a refined version around uh, amphi amphibious assaults, naval units, preparations, things like that, that happened in Sicily. Um, you're going to be finding things about interesting defense lines, uh, the Sivash defense lines, the Sevastopol defense lines, etc. cetera. Um, and I think also you're going to find then the first stage of linking things, as we're going to talk about, with Third Winter. Mm -hmm. Because it will totally transform the third winter section. You won't have that hard southern map edge that mm -hmm. the Germans can use very nicely. Uh, now, with this open terrain of the, the, uh, the approaches to the Crimea, you can outflank a lot of the German positions earlier on. Yeah, you've got it. Mm -hmm. That down just a little bit because we can't see uh, that this is very open terrain up here. Very, yeah. Um, all right, and we got some optional rules here. Pretty standard layout of this book. We've got the general stuff. We've got the Axis-specific stuff. we got the Soviet-specific stuff. Um, there are some Soviet amphibious operations in uh, the 43 to 44 version of the campaign, as I recall, right? There are indeed, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which makes it a, a okay. very interesting interesting battle area in that Kirsch Eastern sector, you know, Germans position, you know, one of the traditional things you end up with in a lot of OCS games is everything gets drifted to the front line. Here, you mm -hmm. Germans definitely needs to keep rear area units to um, pinch off those uh, assaults. Mm -hmm. 
Was there talk about calling this Where the Iron Crosses Grow? Or did somebody already poach that amazing <clears throat> title? I think you'll find that's what Kurt Chip has already put that down as one of the scenarios. Okay, awesome. But equally, awesome. I think we, uh, so there's a quite a bit around um, the Cross of Iron linkage. Um, but I think obviously it had to show the 41 42 and Guy's excellent design as well. So we went through Conquest and Liberation, Crimea. It kind of gave the whole feel for. Um, there's a great book by Wilhelm Tika on Crimea, which covers the whole battle from 41 to 44. And I think that's the the overall design concept and development concept that's gone into the game. It's the entirety of the battles in the Crimea. Awesome. All right. So here we have our playbook. And it looks like this is basically all scenarios. Uh, plus random events, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Random events. Right, yeah, yeah, okay. So that is a thing here. Uh, that is a feature we see in some OCS games, but by no means universally. Uh, I always kind of like it. It throws a, throws a little extra uncertainty into there. So we have scenario one, which is September through December 1941, rite of passage, first phase of the Crimean campaign. And this is the initial break-in, correct? That's where correct, the, yeah. Where the Germans are going to break in through a reasonably well-fortified Soviet line up here. Yeah, I mean, this is, a, this is an ideal game for learning all aspects of OCS. And then you've got a – sometimes you have a game where you have big campaigns. I mean, in my own third winter, it, breaking this down into smaller scenarios, but also, as Chip and Guy have done in the 41-42, and I hope I've done, you've got un areas where there's a few units, then there's mechanized forces, then there's air forces, then there's amphibious. So, again, it's a very good uh, series of games – that build up to learning OCS before you may dive into a big four map or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as OCS games go, this one is, uh, I think, ideally sized for a beginner to try to approach it from. Um, and, you know, the price is, you know, it, the price is what it is, but it's pretty reasonably priced as these games are concerned. Yeah. 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 So we have here scenario two, Tiger by the Tail, which looks like it picks up right where scenario one leaves off and runs from December of 41 to March of 42. And uh, does this run all the way to, when does Sebastopol <clears throat> actually fall, historically? Uh, sp uh, in 42 with Manstein's attack. Um, not my area of expertise is such more. I think it, that's when it, it fell. Um, and then you've got a period of occupation. And then you've got the Case Blue campaign down into the Caucasus in 42-43, the slow German retreat. And then the game picks up again when the, the war comes back to the Crimea in September 43, September, October, with my element of the design. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But as you say, I mean, you find the scenarios are sequential and then aggregate into you a 41-42 campaign, a 43-44 campaign, and then finally the linkage at the start of the Ostfront series. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of games in there. So we have a mini scenario here, which is uh, entirely within May of 1942 eviction notice. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, and here's another one, actually. Mini scenario number two, which is one turn, yeah. actually. Menstein attempts to take Sevastopol, Operation Storfang. Um, so that's pretty cool as well. That's going to come yeah. down to a couple of very key die rolls. Well, it is. And also, again, you'll find it's a good way. How do you at attack fortifications? What's the best use of units? All the sort mm -hmm. of stuff that, frankly, um, if you're going to get proficient at various larger cap OCS games, you need to learn. And it's a good example of a way of doing it, resetting it, trying it again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, scenario three would be Cross of Iron with a uh, fine Cross of Iron quote here. This starts in September, 26 September 43 and runs through January, most of January of 44. So this is linkable with the September start scenario from third winter, it looks like. Absolutely. Uh, that's mine. And it's basically you've got to, if, it, if the Germans have got to do an orderly retreat from Taman, make sure they are secure in the Crimea and the Russians have got to drive them out quickly and get a foothold into the Crimea. Yeah. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got the the last, just in case anybody's wondering here, I've got the last uh, panel folded under just uh, to uh, keep everything on the pad here and in frame. And 
Yeah, you've got a mix, and you get a good mixture of troops. That's the one thing I didn't make. You know, you get your Romanians, all the sort of stuff that you see in probably Case Blue early on. You've got those sort of forces again in 43, 44. You've got a mixture of Ostrom troops, lots of it became sort of like a, a backyard for the Eastern Front, um, with many many small units which you know you said mm -hmm. at the very start what will be see you'll see a lot of differing types of units in this game mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. scenario four here is sword of damocles and it looks like this is the companion piece playable on its own of course too uh but will also combine with the january start scenario from third winter and this will basically Sweet. dangle right off the bottom of the third winter map so as yeah. i i've seen a dozen times now feels like Mm -hmm. uh, here's scenario five, the Liberation Offensive. This is uh, 8 April to 12 May of 1944. Which is a very fast-paced campaign. It's the conquest of Crimea, and mm -hmm. it's a race against time. You know, can the, again, can the Germans hold long enough to evacuate and win victory points that way? Can the Russians conquer the Crimea and capture Sevastopol quick enough to win the game? It's, a, again, mm -hmm. uh, Chip and myself have designed it around both players can eat, win. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So back here at the back of the book, we have the Axis Order of Arrival and Soviet Order of Arrival. We've got uh, designer's notes from both you and Guy. Mm -hmm. So these will, uh, as usual, be fascinating to read. Uh, Chip has a historical uh, developer's notes and a historical commentary uh, article, which is also great. Literally starts with yeah. the ancient Greeks, which I love to see. <laughs> well, Chip, Chip's great at that, and we one of the things we discuss with the games was because he's always the developer on my games is that mm -hmm. people buy games because they're part of a series. They don't necessarily fully grasp all the historical background to it. So this, mm -hmm. in a few pages, gives them a great overview of the of the game they're playing from a historical context as well. Mm -hmm. We've got some uh, some a collaborative gameplay considerations section in the back, as well as a uh, pretty nice looking bibliography. Uh, until we get to the random events table, so uh, there was a it was there for you at least for you researching your part of this, Tony. Was there a specific source that was most useful to you? Uh, I would say, if I was good, can I lean back, Gary? No, go right ahead. Um, let me just quickly see if I've got it. Where is it? Yeah, I've got it here. I drop, drop it. If I can put it up there, people can see it. But light's not very good in my studio at the time. The Crimean Campaign by a guy called Wilhelm Tika. Like many, um, it's German chap writ, wrote it, but it's an excellent study. You've got it there mm -hmm. of the campaign. I mean, I always try and find one book. I find the, the Russian equivalents. And then I would say that, but this tends to give, <laughs> as a German, it's a, probably a more balanced outlook. But yeah, that's a good start point. Okay, cool. That'll be useful for those of us who would like to uh, do some more reading about the campaign uh, and want another good. source other than where the Iron Crosses grow. So it's a good, it's a good source it, from... And I won't publicize where, but it comes from Canada, so it's not too far away from most of the gamers. Okay. So uh, th this is significant. I think this is significant. I've handled so many of these over the years that have basically just been printed on paper. Um, these yeah. are the v, uh, V4.3 charts and tables for OCS on cardstock. Uh, quite nice yep. cardstock at that. So uh, so that is a great, uh, great little touch that makes the end result look a little bit more polished so we've got two of these of course and, and this is the coffee same built on the better than paper gary as well no no it, put spill coffee on my player aids there's going to be words will be said so that's all i have to <laughs> yeah. say okay so uh but yeah no these look nice the basic layout here mm -hmm. is uh, if there have been changes to this it's going to be microscopic changes but uh these have Pretty much the four point oh charts and tables at this point, just printed Absolutely. on nice paper. All right, we have an access tables display. This is nice too. Keep this on the board so you don't have to keep. Hey, who's got the book? Because that keeps happening. Um, replacements yep. and supply for the Germans. Replacements uh, and supply and amphibious landing stuff for the Soviets. Mm -hmm. 
we have an entire access player display. And I'll, I'll emphasize again, because I don't know if I said this, this is the only map. So you've got about a one map footprint plus just a little bit of extra footprint, which is this stuff. Uh, there's actually two. Uh, there's a, there's a two yep. Soviet player displays. Actually, They're, they'll presumably need this large dead pile um, at some point <laughs> where the German dead pile is over here. Um, so we've got an access player display, which has a general records track for a variety of things. It's great that you've put pictures of the uh, the counters that go on the general records track on the general records track. That's pretty cool. Thank you. Little break things for breakdowns. Uh, you've got your front HQs. We just, I assume we just have one front HQ here, correct? Um, we do um, on the coastal side. Uh, I think when you come up to the conquest with fourth Ukrainian, there is an option to keep two in the game. Um, and particularly mm -hmm. when you tie it into the OS front, the third winter games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So need, then it will be significant. Need, uh, but equally, as you we said earlier, it's if you before you dive into something like third winter, if you want to get used to the frontal rules, this is a great mm -hmm. start point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So here's another, I think, very significant upgrade for uh, OCS. These are there's two TECs, terrain effects charts, and they also are not only printed on the cardstock, uh, which they haven't been in the past, but they're not just on the back of the book. Um, this is a yep. standalone T two standalone TECs, full color images of the terrain. Um, this is, you know, I I don't know that I've ever really whined about this, but I mean. It's about time, right? I, I mean, <laughs> yes. fair enough. Now, I, mean, I think it's been a problem. I mean, hopefully, as I said at the very start, you'll see some upgrades. I mean, you know, many people, it's a big purchase. And, you know, to have stuff all mm -hmm. in a rule book that eventually gets dogged or, again, accidents mm -hmm. happen um, is, is limiting. So there should be mm -hmm. ease, aids easier that you can keep a master copy or master rule book that, to one side it shouldn't be almost a player aid in itself yeah mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah no i I'm totally agree mm -hmm. and i feel like with now granted you know ocs is not the only thing mmp does right so it, we're kind of skipping some stuff in in between ocs titles but i feel like each new ocs title there's been a noticeable upgrade in the component quality component proliferation extra stuff like this that we started to see really with smolensk uh, more so in Hungarian Rhapsody, even more so in Third Winter. Um, yep. So nice work on MMP's part. So we've got three counter sheets, and these are on the newer, thicker, somewhat thicker uh, white core stuff that MMP's been using. One of the three is a standard OCS marker sheet, which will go in the three-inch box that is already filled with unpunched OCS marker sheets. <laughs> Um, as I think we all have a million of these, you know, when, when I was at winter offensive, I like bought a couple of them just cause I'm all, I could use more markers. And then between then and like last year, I'm like, I, I got all the other OCS games. I got literally more, uh, marker sheets than I know what to do with. So at this point I'm pa packing them up as like oh, generic OCS marker kits and giving them away as souvenirs. <laughs> All right, so we've got Soviets. Looks like we've got four Soviet Army HQs. Uh, we've got three different front HQs and some more uh, mm -hmm. Army HQs up here. As we come to expect from the Soviets, lots of infantry divisions. But we've also got the uh, 19th Tank Corps. Mm -hmm. And uh, looks like that's the only multi-unit formation for the Soviets. But there's a, a otherwise a lot of stuff, a lot of artillery, a um, lot of a uh, lot of infantry, and uh, a, a, just a little bit really of uh, of uh, mechanized tank or tank stuff. So largely a, a, an infantry campaign, I think, from the Soviet standpoint. With some independence issues, yes, it's not a muff, as we would call it, multi-unit formation battle per se. Um, it's a lot more combined arms and a lot more of a, in some areas, a infantry assaults. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you're definitely going to see infantry assaults around Sevastopol and in any other fortified mm -hmm. areas. So here we have the German counter sheet where we have looks like two army HQs. Uh, five uh, core HQs, 
and uh, a not really particularly surprising mix of of stuff here. Some infantry divisions, uh, some tanks. We got uh, some units as small as battalions here, but we also see uh, some Luftwaffe units. Who are these? Uh, are these Kriegsmarine uh, guys with the uh, sort of purple bottoms? Yes, they are. Sorry, the Kriegsmarine, a lot of the coastal guns and fortified stuff like that you have. Um, it's hard to, just hard to see. Yes, I can see where you put, you're looking at. Yes, so you've got the yeah. Kriegsmarine fortress guns above the Luftwaffe. You've got Oss troop, front troops. You've got a Slovakian division in there and things like that. As I said, a lot of the Allies were getting a bit twitchy about at this time of the war and... They got parked in there. And you'll see there's quite a lot of um, remnant Romanian units because um, mm. Antonescu was having a bit of a row with um, the Fuhrer about um, replacements and whether they should be drawn to the uh, back to the Romanian to face the onslaught there, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's, the German has to harbour a, a hodgepodge of units together with the 17th Army to fight the Russian invasion and come back. Okay. Okay. And we've got this... Uh... This one Sicily 2 errata counter that I think I've seen in the last five games, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> but, hey, I you know, I'd rather have it than not have it, right? Plus, uh, plus one yeah. for Hungarian Rhapsody, which I'm not sure that I have, and two for Smolensk, which I probably do have. Yeah. Oh, and one yeah, for yeah. Blitzkrieg Legend as well, and Korea. So I'm not sure about those. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, this looks, uh, this looks great. Um, very excited about, you know, I'm excited whenever, whenever an OCS game comes out to be quite frank about it, but, uh, but this one, um, because it, it's, it's got that sort of modularity, right? Where it can be played on its own and having played at least the 41, uh, start campaign, uh, I found it pretty engaging uh, and yet extremely manageable, right? You're not talking at, at the start of that campaign, you're not maneuvering with 200 units, right? Um, so it's pretty Absolutely. manageable. You get to see uh, some some pretty hot and heavy action very quickly. Um, mm. So, you know, I, I was lucky enough to get an early uh, glimpse of this in playtesting. And now, thanks to Tony and the generosity of uh, Tony and Multiman Publishing, we got an early look at it here. Uh, like I said, I will put a link to the product page uh, for Crimea in the video description. Um, mm. Shipping is planned to start as early as as we record this tomorrow, but that is the day of the release of this video. So it, it will be mm. shipping at literally any minute. You may still be able to get the pre-order price when you watch this video, but don't count on that. That That is probably going to be off the table like really, really soon. Um, no no later very, than Very, very quickly. Yeah. 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 The, 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 the last, Pete Bartlett just put out the last call like a couple hours ago. So, uh, so Tony, yeah. I want to say thanks. Uh, thanks for doing this. And I think you, the next OCS game in the pipeline that we are likely to see a pre-order for is going to be one of yours, too. So let's talk about that. Okay. Um, yeah, it looks like um, Chip and myself have been working for, very hard to get Forgotten Battles finished, which is Army Group Center's campaigns in all around the Minsk Highway, Smolensk, the Perpet Marshes, same period, 26 September, 43 through to May 44. It's mm -hmm. a ferocious, a ferocious battle, if you, uh, and we call it the Forgotten Battles, um, uh, after David Glantz's, Colonel Glantz's book, who we were very fortunate to go and meet, and he talked us through a lot of the campaigns, so the game's going to be dedicated to him. And that's the next one you'll see. Four maps, big game, a lot of very mm -hmm. interesting scenarios in there as well, and, and um, possibly for many gamers, um, a period of the war that they don't know again a lot about you know huge battles yeah. around vitebsk in the winter of 43 44 um and i hope people enjoy it but it, we should be submitting it in about a month or two's time um to mmp uh, and then we go through a process of discussion around that and then that should be the next one on pre-order yeah Awesome. And awesome. Hopefully course. we'll even see that by the end of the year, but I wouldn't, wouldn't count on that, but it shouldn't be much longer if so. And no, it shouldn't. Course, and, uh, and it should. No, I was going to say, and with Crimea and all the rest, you'll start to see then increment for those with the time and space, Gary, as you know, mm -hmm. and there are a few around, there'll be, you'll start to see a rule set rules as in Crimea and everything else that if you want to lay the games out and you can play them together and the rules will mm -hmm. allow you to play them together together there'll also be a very 
nice scenario I've just finished, just to find finish off with, which will, many people were a little bit hard map edges. The piece bit north of Kiev in mm -hmm. third winter, you'll get a scenario that puts the first Ukrainian front with the, the uh, first Belarus and part of the, when it broke down from the Western front. So you'll be able to play that piece of outflanking Kiev and all the rest and attacking Gomel mm. and Chinikov. So again, be able to play the game separately, scenario separately, or link them together. And I hope mm -hmm. folk enjoy them. Mm -hmm. I am literally building a table with this, all this stuff in mind, just so you know. So, which is <laughs> also something I may have future questions about because I'm patterning it a little bit after your tables. But look, I don't even want to talk about that. So, so once again, keep your eyes open for Forgotten Battles. I have got to play in the playtest of that a couple of years ago, I think now, and that's Dynamite as well. Very different feeling from a, a, a lot of other OCS East Front games, but I found it very satisfying. Um, so big time looking forward to that as well and delighted to have Crimea finally in my greasy little hands. So thanks uh, <laughs> thanks very much, Tony, for, uh, for agreeing to come on and provide some designer or co-designer at least commentary for this uh this delightful unboxing pleasure and thank you everyone and gary i look forward to seeing you at winterfest absolutely see you in three months take care thank you everyone bye-bye now i'd like to take this opportunity to thank the patrons of Ardwolf's wolf's lair without whose support and encouragement we would not be able to make the kind of content that we do here so thank you patrons if you'd like to help support the channel, there are links to do so in the video description. The best way to do that is through the Patreon, which is also linked in the video description. Until next time, thank you for watching, and happy wargaming.